Hey, hey, how is everybody this evening? Does the AV sound good? We've got Sweet Acres, Tommy, Adele, and Shady Grady and Linda in first. Hey, Skitty. Skitty, Boots Cats. Thanks, Price Tag. Um, Mike B made that intro for me. Um, I asked him if I contacted him and said I need a cool intro. And uh, that was what he put together, and it was perfect right off. Thanks, Adele. Let me know that the AV is good. So, hey, Laura. The best moderator out there. How's everybody doing tonight? Finally got back to a Tank and Tuesdays live stream. The last couple of weeks been a little rough, so I had to cancel them. So what's everybody do on a Tuesday evening? Hey, Rosie. Good to see you. Just going through the comments here, seeing who all comes in. So on this stream, it's a little bit more dedicated to having people join me. Come up, chat, show your tanks. So... There's a link for anybody who wants to come up. Wednesday morning here, I was streaming and decided to send everyone over here to support you, Salem. Well, thanks, Adele. I appreciate it. Uh, this stream only goes an hour. I only have an hour block, and Foxy goes live. I was able to squeeze an hour in looking at the fish fam calendar, so I certainly appreciate you uh, doing that, Adele. Thank you very much, but I hope I didn't step on your toes. New local Austin, hello. Don't forget, the link is up there for anyone who wants to come up. Uh-oh. Why did this... Um, so one thing I wanted to talk about is my fancy goldfish. Let me know if you can still hear me okay. I'm talking a little bit lower. So I've always had goldfish in the fish room. Whether it be your regular goldfish or your fancy goldfish. I made a video about goldfish and I talked about fancy goldfish and... Fancy goldfish are a little bit more sensitive. And um, it's because the way their bodies are designed, they're a little more compact. And because of that, there's less room for the organs. So inside their bodies, the organs are all packed together. And this is why fancy goldfish have more issues than your regular fish and things like that. Uh-oh. Looks like we've got Adele. Hey, good morning. Oh, hang on. I can't hear you for some reason. Hang on, I'm going to go grab some head brain. Okay. Appreciate you coming up. Can you hear me okay? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Cool. There we go. So, oh, thanks, man. What's going on? What's that? Well, why I was talking about the fancy goldfish is, is I've had some troubles with them and bloat issues. Uh -oh. I was able to easily sit doing an Epsom salt bath for 30 minutes a day. But all of a sudden, I got two more that they're bloated up again out of nowhere. I don't overfeed them. They get lots of vegetables. Mm. 
but yeah, two of them bloated up again. So I'm doing the Epsom salt baths again. And, it, and I can't believe how quick Epsom salt baths really help. I can see a visual difference in, in, the, in the swelling, so to speak. It comes right down. Oh, wow. Uh, well, so, it's good that it's helping. Oh, yeah. Out of the, uh, any, I've done the meds. Uh, Father Fish told me to try raw garlic. I've done the peas. Nothing ever seems to help. But these Epsom salt baths amazingly help. Wow. So that's all I do now. And it's a little bit more natural. Yeah. And is that just like Epsom salt from the store, like from a supermarket? Or is it special? Like, no. It's great. Walmart. Um, uh, just Walmart Epsom salt. And like Tommy was saying here, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, hey, Aqua Balls, thanks for coming in. Empire Dirt Aquatics, good to see you. Like you said here, feed them food, moringa powder and garlic. And I've done the garlic. I've done the peas. Yeah. They get a dose of Vitachem every week. Um, the tank's obviously good. I don't have any water issues. They just got bloat for some reason. I feed them extreme aquatics, goldfish food. And for their vegetables, I give them um, North Fins veggie pellets in combination with New Life Spectrum's Algae Max veggie pellets. So they get good food. I just don't understand why they're bloating up sometimes like that. But I've never had as many problems with bloat as I have with fancy goldfish. Yeah. All my other fish are fine. Even when I had regular goldfish, never had that issue. Mm. So I just don't know really interesting fancy goldfish. <laughs> um, Kay says if you feed floating foods, that's bad news for goldfish. Yeah. Hey, Alex, thanks for coming in, buddy. Kay feed you. them more bottom food or sinking food. Hey, who's saying that? Hey, Kay. Kay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I straight up feed them goldfish food. And I do feed them foods that, and I don't feed them flake food because if you feed them flake food, they're up there gulping air at the surface. Yeah. Don't do that. My pellets sink so they go down and they're not gulping air. I make sure all that stuff and they still get bloat for some reason. I'll have to look that up. You've told me about that before, Tommy. Moringa. Oh. Yeah. KG, I just touched on that subject right there. Uh, I learned that years ago, and, and <laughs> since then, it's all pellet foods. So, so I do everything right. It's just like, what, yeah. where did it come from, you know? <laughs> oh, Alex, that's um, Only Oscars. It's a towel from Only Oscars. Yeah, I like that. you got to send me that. Yeah, I so. love it. <laughs> no, remember, it's mine. <laughs> remember I told you in your last life? I want to say I, I wanted to send me one of her Spock fish ones, so then I can have like one on one side, one on right. the other. Yes, sir, KG. They sure do. That's why all my stuff sinks. Like the extreme aquatics goldfish pellets, how their pellets work is it's they call it like semi floating. One out of every six pellets will float a little bit more in the water column. Most of them go down in. Of course, all the veggie pellets go right to the bottom. But they're never up at the surface gulping air. And I don't understand why they're... I mean, they could be doing it on their own even when I'm sleeping. Maybe it's the surface gulping air just because they think something's up there. Yeah. But it's just the two... The one I understand why the other one just came out of nowhere. Like I came home from work today and he was bloated up. It's like, what the heck? <laughs> Are you supposed to wet the food before you feed the goldfish pellets? I've never done that. Oh, that's like, interesting. Like soaking it before you pop it in the right. But in the that's tank. Why, that's why I like to get sinking foods because I don't want to do anything extra. I just want to feed the fish and move on. So I give them high quality foods that sink. Um, yeah, I, don't, I definitely don't overfeed them, and yet still, it's a green superfood. I have to look it up. Oh, Tommy. okay. Oh, that's that moringa. You know, KJ, I've heard their foods <laughs> really good. 
I, I've heard their foods are really good. I actually got a free sample of the foods one time. It's like I have 3,500 and 650 odd different foods. I'm trying to get down to two high quality foods because it's important to vary diet. Um, I don't want to have and keep try to keep track of a million different foods. You know, yeah. I think they're all good, but none of them have it right, like Ben says. And so I do vary the diets, but and they are high quality foods, but I really don't want to add another freaking one. Oh, yes. Good idea, Sarah. Could you drop June's link um, for her channel? I think she's got her store stuff advertised there. I'm going to screenshot what you're saying right there, Keith. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'll look at it. Rosalie from McCree. He was grown no. in Africa and single handedly bought a handful of areas out of starvation because of how nutrient dense it is. Wow. It's, <laughs> it's green. <laughs> June's awesome, and I think she's streaming tomorrow. She did, I did see a stream up there. Okay. They are good. Time's better than extreme. Okay. Yeah. If I can get down to one food, that's my plan. I want to get down to one food that's good for all the fish and it's high quality, but yet it doesn't break the bank either. And now North Finn claims, yeah. you know, they, they use nothing but the high quality marine proteins in their foods, you know, and that makes high quality food. When I was doing that review, I was talking to the guy, um, uh, Darius is his name. And, you know, you know, one of the things he says, you know, uh, yes, you want to vary food, but that's the nice thing about Northfin Foods because you have that all in one food. Now, I still yeah. like to go back and forth between uh, extreme and them. And, you know, I've got some Omega One on the shelf. You know, my Oscars, my Dempsey love those freeze-dried shrimps and, and stuff like that. But I'm, I'm just trying to get to that one good food that has everything they need. I'm, I got yeah. one food. I can go around all my tanks and I'm done. I've got like because I've got the guppies and then I've got the angels and the the ram. I've got one good quality pellet for each. So I've got like a minute a, a mini pellet for the um for the guppies and then I've got pellets for the the angels and then I have a flake food. So I've got a really good quality food and then I have a filler. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. and you, you, I just you, buy like supermarket flake food for tropical fish okay. and they both love it. So, okay. But then um, I have the really good quality stuff to give them all of the, the good nutrients and, and healthy, you know, good food for them. Right. And I did read this, Tommy. Um, I'm going to, I'm definitely going to look into that. And this is interesting here to me. Um, and I like listening to KJE because, you know, right. some people look at KJE and guys like him that have websites and sell stuff. And, yeah. and cause you know, no one likes a salesman. Right. But KJE said pretty much get rid of uh, the easy green and go with thrive. It's got a little bit more oomph and it's basically the same product. It is the same project, but you know, thrives the original maker. So I said, okay, I'm going to give it a go. And because I listened to him and tried it, I have noticed a major difference in my plants, a major difference in my plants. The Java ferns especially have ballooned up in the jungle bow. I don't worry about water sprite. I think they'll grow in gasoline. Yeah. <laughs> but the Amazon sword, since, since I switched over, it is great. So when he makes comments like this, and I've watched that video about extreme aquatics that KG, KG, Tropics, KG Tropical put out. And I know that extreme was the one that developed their food and made their food because they wanted a high quality food, a one food that they could go around, be more efficient and feeding all their fish at the farm. So he's saying here, they don't even make it anymore and it's farmed out. Wow. Now the ingredients listed on the container are high quality ingredients. And I have compared them to North Fins, which appear to be high quality ingredients. So I figured let's mix them. 
you get the best yeah. of both worlds. Yeah. So then he says something like this, and it's like, and I'm going to take his word because, you know, he's in contact yeah. with the companies. He knows he's saying they, they do not make it, though. It is farmed out. Just saying. <laughs> right. So it's like, but is it their recipe that they have farmed? What do you mean by farmed out, Keith? Like, is it their, still their recipe and they're having other people just make it for them? I mean, they can't yeah. change the recipe, right? It's they own it. <laughs> He's like, but I sell the good stuff, lol, just saying. <laughs> KJE sells Bassler. Warrior sells all aquatic grown, no immersed, all plants are ready for your aquarium. So does Keith like, Keith, do you like Northfin foods then? So I've just gone Hikari for my fish, but I don't need anything hardcore. You know, I did research on a lot of these foods and I've watched other people like I think Ben has a video out there where he rated different foods by looking at the ingredients on the back and Hikari was like fourth or fifth down on the list because okay. if you know if you go through these high quality foods they tell you the first thing you want to look at is the first three to four ingredients okay and if yeah. you go north fin being the first one and then extreme three, four, five, six ingredients or high quality ingredients. If you look at Hikari's, you get like one or two and then they start getting into their man-made I don't know if it's synthetic. Yeah. You know what I mean? So by that rating, he he on his list, he he knocked that down to like four or five. But Hikari's been around a long time. Yeah. In the end, you can have the most It's something food. that's very commonly sold here. Um, there are like a lot of the specialty foods and things we don't because we're so far away, we don't get access to the same sort of stuff. Um, we get some products, but not all. If I if I wanted to order online to get, you know, Dr. Basslier, that'd be great. But it costs so much in shipping and so much in, you know, postage just to get, you know, your product. You, Yeah. I, I go for whatever's cheaper, whatever's easiest, and whatever's going to fill my fish up. Um, right. At the end of the day... Um, you can have the most expensive food or the most cheapest right. food. If your fish are not going to eat it, you have yeah, to. Yeah, like them, they, you know, they absolutely smash the hikari. They love the hikari. Yeah. Um, and I, as I said, I use the flake food as a little bit of a filler, so I'm not feeding as much of the hikari. Um, but you know, you guys all love my angels. The the ram looks amazing. He's doing well, and I have guppies coming out of my ears. So. By that logic, I'm going, okay, what I'm feeding my fish is working for me. It's not going to work for everyone else, just like anything else that we do in this hobby. Um, it's about finding what works for you, your budget, your lifestyle, your hobby. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And hey, Big Steve, thanks for coming in. And that's cool. Oh, hey, that Steve. You, that's cool uh, that you were able to just not feed them. for And see, I don't overfeed my fish either. I feed them every other day. So it's not like they're getting overfed. I probably could. I probably could go down to every other day for the for the angels. They're getting pretty chonky, but I mean they're happy. And that's, at the end of the day, that's what I'm I'm looking for. I'm, I'm I have healthy, well fed fish. They're happy. They're chilled out. They're not attacking each other. Yeah. Hi, Craig. Good morning. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, as long as they're happy and healthy and you're not having issues, you're good. But what, yeah. another thing I like about feeding every other day, it saves you a lot of money on fish food, especially yeah. if you want high quality stuff because it's more expensive. I don't but, feed much and I've got, I I bank up a lot of my, my flake food. So um, I just get the the little containers there from the supermarket for, you know, four or five bucks or something. Um, and that lasts me quite a while, honestly. I yeah. give a pinch in the morning to all my fish. Um, the angels get their hikari pellets, uh, a little pinch of those once a day as well. And then the, the guppies will get a little pinch of the micro pellets every now and then. I do have um, blood worms in the freezer as well and a community frozen food as well. So, and I just kind of supplement that every now and then when I remember. <laughs> okay. 
And hey, Ross, thanks for coming in. Good to see you again, buddy. And I was curious about what he just said there because I have the Vibrobites and I've never tried the Wigglers. And so yeah. his, his fish like the uh, Vibrobites. And I've got some Vibrobites here um, that I use. Oh, there you go. So, so let me ask you this, Keith. Let's say I wanted, I don't know what Bassler's foods come in as far as grams, pounds, or what have you. But let's say I wanted some, let's say I wanted 500 grams of cichlid pellets. What's that look like? Depends on the size of the pellet, doesn't it? Yeah, like, well, I mean, <laughs> let's say two millimeter. Two millimeter, just for the sake of the argument, let's say I want a pound. Of Out of curiosity. Two millimeter cichlid pellets. Thanks, Getty, and I do. Yeah, I mean, the fish, the food works. I mean, it's not like I'm out there. One fish food I hate is, um, what, what now the name's escaping me. Oh, what is that cheap fish food? It comes in almost like a, it's a little container with a lid. It's orange. Wardley's. The cheap freaking uh, Wardley foods. I hate that crap. So that just, that sounds like Tetramin here. Okay. Yeah, that crap is junk. Yeah, I've been on your site, Keith. Keith, you're working. I'll have to. Guys. I'll have to go to the the LFS and show you guys like what we can get in our stock standard stores. So at our box stores, looks like five hundred grams. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, Greg. <laughs> Not that I need 500 grams, but like, uh, you know, just <laughs> what is a bag of cichlid food or a container? Does his, does his food come in containers or does it come in bags? Bags, yeah. Well, I, this, for some reason, this isn't even telling me how many people I have in here. Does it tell you? Oh, that's weird. No, it should be up next to your live timer at the top left. I know, and it may show it. I've noticed that with mine. Um, sometimes it'll show zero people and I have, you know, at least half a dozen people there. So. Okay. Earthworm um, to goo frozen in small cubes. My fish loved it one time I did it last year. Yeah. Can someone ask fish fam link for our stats, please? Yeah. I usually it shows. New local. That. Thanks. Laura. Um, oh, I like when we go on Adele field trips. Yeah. <laughs> We went uh, to the hardware store yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm waiting for my light bulb. There we go. Current viewers, 26. Max viewers, 30. Participants, 24. Light count, 16. Well, that's great. A bit, bit light on the light counts, guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Adele. Um, <laughs> I agree with KJE here. I, I'm the same. I, I, I have flakes. If I'm going to feed flakes, I do like the uh, extreme community crave, but I also mix in their so fly. So I'm getting the, the uh, spirulina krill and so fly black soldier fly flakes all in one, but I do, I like my pellets better too. But I, I, I don't know. It's all we do agreed pellets always better for the critter even birds. And another thing I like about pellets is, um, you know, like I got a golden dojo loach in this one tank and, so all your bottom feeders, they'll go down there and eat that too. Whereas the flakes mostly float. Now they'll fly around and eat that too. But there's one fish I absolutely have to have a larger flake for, or they don't get to eat well. And that is my blood parrots. I have to take the North fin. I got a bunch of North fin flakes. I grab a big pinch and I stick my hand right down in the water and put it right by them. And I watch it's harder for them to eat because of the design of their mouths, but they can suck them big flakes in easy. Oh, okay. So I have to make sure I got big flakes for them. It's just so hard. I don't know if you have blood parrots or if you've ever watched them eat, but they have a harder time eating. My one has a little bit harder of a time than the other. Yeah, that makes yeah, it makes sense. So I make sure they get food, and it's just so much easier for them to get in their mouths by that flake, and they'll, I can watch them suck them right in. See, the the guys are going, yeah, we don't use flake. Flakes are crap. Makes a huge mess. For me, I will pop a little pinch in my tanks and my guppies will pick at that all day. 
Okay. Bastard they graze. So. Okay. Let's see, Peplin came in. Good to see you. I'm a little behind on chat. Yeah, a little bit. Catch up. <laughs> Look on the Got to reach the bottom of the chat. <laughs> yes. So it ran depending on the pellet size could be extra. I don't need. Well, I could probably have what is the extra large nine millimeter, Keith? If they are, I could use those for my Oscars. Because actually, it's funny. If I put a pellet that's anything smaller than Big Fella, Extremes Big Fella, um, like if I put like a two millimeter pellet in there, they're looking at me like, what the hell is this? And they won't even entertain it. <laughs> so it has to be bigger. They don't go after it. Appreciate the info on that, Keith. And I'll definitely get on your site and look. I just figured I'd ask you why you're here. Um, you know. Hello, Garcia. Medium half millimeter large is one millimeter. Uh, I know that Extreme makes that monster pellet, and it's a nine millimeter beast. And I actually had to grind some of that up my coffee grinder so I could feed it to all my fish because I had so much, and the oh, officers okay. weren't even liking it. Thanks, Ross. Oh, hey, God. We have Wardley and Tetra Men here. It's right next to the Hearts food. No one buys it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got to go. Thank you, KJ. Appreciate you. I got, oh, so you sent Craig's a light bulb, but not me, huh, Adele? No. Me? Oh, I think he needed to go to the hardware store to get his. I remember them saying something last night. And I got to take mine back, Craig. They're going to replace the light in my kitchen. So I don't even need the bulb that I bought yesterday. I'll yeah. do a little trip back down there. I see. I see. Being inefficient. That's okay, Laura. You, you contribute to, the, to my channel and, and help me out so much. Otherwise, I wouldn't even be mad at you. <laughs> Craig says flakes are crap. Freeze dried black worms. I, that's what I got when I got a free sample of that bastard food. It was cute. It was cubes of black worms, and you press it and stick it on the glass. Oh. And then you can watch them come right up the glass and tear it up. I want to try some of that. That'd be cool. They loved it. I put it in my twenty nine gallon tank for all my little like uh, neon tetras and and ah uh, oh god, why is the name escaping me? I'm not. My words aren't kind of good tonight. The little <laughs> orange fish. Uh, they got Mickey Mouse ones, pepper ones, uh, summer uh, platies. Platies, yeah. They I was going to say Molly's. Where did I get Molly's yeah. from? Molly, yeah. I have a Molly in there, too, and they were tearing it up. I like small fish. Whatever so, happened to the 99-cent light bulbs, right? Now they're like 9 bucks, Craig. <laughs> I spent 20 bucks on a light bulb for my kitchen yesterday and it doesn't even work. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. The cost of everything now. Yeah. I'm dev I'm taking that thing back today. I need my, I want my 20 bucks back. Wow. Yeah, really. And there's the link for anybody else who might want to come up to I see Garcia came in. He always likes to join up. So I see you here and Skeddy and, uh, I like this group too, Austin. <laughs> Sarah Garcia. Okay. Back off, Jesse. This is hard work. She says. <laughs> Hello, Laura. I like you. Know, I, was, I, I said I wouldn't even be mad at you for not hitting the like. <laughs> she's, she's a fantastic moderator. Oh, Craig's fish room is empty. Yay. That's going to look awesome in the new place, Craig. So they did find a new place? Yeah, so they're, they're in the process of moving at the moment. Okay. Um, the, the new place is bigger. It's huge. Moving on up. Bunny's in. Always good to see Bunny in. What do you mean, Garcia? We see you all the time. Anyways. <laughs> Hi, Bunny. Now, like I say, I can only probably go for another 30 minutes. I would like to go. Well, someone should come up because I'm about to drop down and go get ready for my day. Okay. But I got 
I don't like to jump on uh, Foxy's toes. She goes live at seven. Oh, Vinoxky's here. Hey, Vinoxky. Good to see you. Yes, sir. Good to see. You. Good to see. You. Good to see you. So you're gonna you're gonna go to do work and stuff. Um, not today. It's just my day off. So I'm gonna do. I've got to do water changes and tank maintenance on this tank. Um, do a little bit of housework. I'm gonna go back to the hardware store with that light bulb. So I've got a few things going on. It's my day. It's my only day off. I, I work all day tomorrow, and then on Friday I've got to be here. I've got an electrician coming to um, to put in a new light in my kitchen. So yeah, I won't probably won't be able to go anywhere because they didn't tell me a time. So I just want to have the whole day here and not have to worry about doing anything. So. Okay. Oh, okay, Pep. Well, then that's that's because when I was on the Fish Fam calendar, it was saying she goes live at seven. So. Uh, oh, okay. Well, cool. Thank you for that. Uh, well, cool. I'm glad you got someone coming over to help you out. And, um, do they have to put the, oh, whole through up? the I think so. Well, um, so I sent through a work order to the real estate yesterday and sent photos and stuff, explain what happened. It wasn't just the light bulb blowing. I think it's actually the little, um, I'm not good with electronics, but there's like a, a box in there because it's a round fluorescent tube light. Mm -hmm. So there's like a obviously a diffuser of some kind in there for the so, el electronic side, so, and so I think they, that blue. Okay, yeah. There's fuses. Uh, also, what can fail on the fluorescent bulbs is your ballast that are up inside. The ballast. That's it. Sorry. Thank you. I am. I actually went to school for like electrical. I, I can do yeah. commercial, industrial, all that, and I did that for. Uh, uh, I wired up. 480 volt three phase machines and and you know residential i've done all that stuff so if i was there i could fix that for you i, I honestly play. just hope that they're going to get rid of the fluorescent light altogether and just put a normal light in mm -hmm. so then i can just switch the bulbs and i don't have to worry about the ballast i don't have to worry about anything else and i can just use a normal bulb yeah, exactly. I mean, there's nothing too wrong with fluorescence, but why most people are wrong with LEDs is because they're yeah. to last longer and they're then they are easier on your electricity. Um, I mean, this is the second time it's blown out. Um, meanwhile, right. I've been here just over five years, and my bathroom light is a like one of the small tube, the thin tube lights, the fluorescent light, and that's been going just fine for God knows how long. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm, I've been waiting for that one to go out, <laughs> so I've got to change it. But um, so far, so good. Knock on wood. Yeah, yeah. I hope that works out for you. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Bunny. I hope I hope you oh. you get better from that real soon. Yeah. So, yeah, big. I was laughing about that, Big Steve, because Pepla said balance, yeah, and he says, "I can't remember who you calling a bastard." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, ballasts. Uh, uh, another thing that can make lights blow prematurely like that too is like maybe you have uh, a wire loose up in there. If it's not getting a well, good chin, it'll be yeah, sick. and that can take a light bulb out and ballasts faster than it should. I'm a bit worried that there might be rodents or something up in the roof. I know one of the neighbors had some issues with mice um, a while back, but I, mean, I don't get mice in here because I've got the cat. <laughs> um, yeah, it could be something up in the ceiling. I don't know. That's what that's the electrician's job to come and figure out what's happened to it and yeah. replace it. But thankfully, because I'm a renter, it's um it's not my responsibility. It's it's up to the owner and I guess the owner okayed it straight away. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah, well at least you got one that, that's you know, takes care of business and you don't got the ones that just lets crap go. Yeah, more or less. Like it just depends on what it is. Um, I've had issues with the the uh, the air conditioner, which you know takes them over a week to to get someone out here. But all in all, I can't complain because they still actually make an effort to fix stuff when I ask. So yeah, yeah, you have a landlord, not a slumlord. I guess so. I mean, it's hard. I think the owner for this place actually lives in a different state, so. Um, it's, it's really up to how fast the real estate can can speak with the owner to get an okay to do something. 
Oh, okay. I got you on that for sure. I don't want to piss around with something. <laughs> Yeah, these aren't working. There, that's well, that's not my favorite. Oh. Well, that's <laughs> because you're vertical, not horizontal, so I'll do that. Oh, either way. <laughs> so, well, cool. Yeah, my my day. Ted actually. Go ahead. Sorry, no, you're fun. Today I had to go up for a, a training up in uh, Raleigh today. So my eight-hour day was just sitting down and doing some training. So tomorrow I get back to the normal. Good to yeah, see you training's time. always fun. <laughs> yeah, it's a leadership training thing we're going through to develop you and learn how the business works on the inside a little bit financially and, and, and training you and prepping you to get into a leadership position. Oh, that's cool. If you're fit for it, you can go through that. And yeah. it doesn't mean you're necessarily going to be move up to a team leader, but um, it, you know, it gets it under the belt for you because you have to take that class regardless to move up if you want to do it or not. Yeah. I like that though. I like, you know, having the opportunity to, um, to better your, your situation, you know, move up the ranks if you want to. Well, yeah. um, otherwise it is just good knowledge to have. Absolutely. And I just, I don't want to be turning wrenches when I'm 50 and 60 years old. So when I get to that point, I'd like to be able to have some experience under my belt for, you know, for leadership and, and understanding yeah. how business works and how, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So and the only way to do that is put the work in and this is, takes a year to complete. So. Oh, there you one, go. Yeah. Once a month, every second Tuesday a month, we go up and do it for a year and then when it's done you can have that under your belt something else you can put on the yeah. resume too oh that's awesome Let's see that's here. kind of i um i decided that instead of just sticking with my my store my contracted store um there's about nine different brands under our company banner so i can go and do shifts at different stores to get that variety of experience Right, And I think at the end of the day, I thought, well, that's, it's a good move on my part to be flexible like that, but also it's giving me that extra variety. So it looks better on my resume. Right. I, I can adapt to any situation, any store, um, and put in the hard work regardless of where I am. Yeah, exactly. And the more you put it under your belt, the better. Have you? And mm -hmm. one, one of the things they're doing in that class is they're having us read a book. It's called The Five Levels of Leadership. Have you ever heard it? It's blue and black. I think so. Yeah. That is a fantastic book to read. If, if and I so say you can pick that book up and, and read it. And it's it's very it, it's 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 very good book. And it just talks to you about all the different levels of leadership. And and the whole time it tells you different stories and. Uh, that the guy went through and got where he's at and it's just they you know it's there's different scenarios in there like one was like george washington one time rode up and saw a guy delegating work to soldiers they were trying to put up a pole and he's like pointing and saying and yeah like a boss would right mm. george washington rolls up and says well, why aren't you helping them and the and the guy goes do you know who you're talking to i'm a corporal <laughs> <laughs> so George Washington jumps off his horse, helps them put the pole up, sits back on his horse and says, basically, and by the way, the next time I come back, you might want to think about helping them, says your commander in chief and drives off <laughs> George Washington. But the point is, his boss helped, not just delegated work and pointed, and it's called leading yeah, by example, exactly. right? Lead by example, create yeah. credibility. So it goes through some things like that. It's a really good book. Laura says, I don't like change and I am, and I'm comfortable. That's probably a bad thing for moving up the ranks. Exactly. And that's the thing. There's nothing consistent in life, but change Laura. And if you're not willing to yeah. adapt and change, you kind of lay stagnant and if you're stagnant. You don't grow. Um, I've, uh, I've been started speaking of the, the leadership and, the, and um, you know, moving up the ranks. Um, I started out as just a sales assistant with my current company. 
Um, but one of the other stores that I'm working at, I now have someone working. Um, so I, I'm a supervisor and then I have a sales assistant come in to do lunch cover shift for me. So I kind of have to delegate. I have to make sure everything's done in the store. I have to give these people instruction. And I kind of, I struggled with the last guy because he was like, he, he had um, an attitude where he was acting above his wage, mm -hmm. um, thinking he's better than everyone else and that he knew everything within two months of starting. And, and um, it made it, it was just more difficult for me at the end of the day to try and make sure that everything was done in the store. Right. Now I have a new lady um, who started she's going to be working at another store that's opening up, um, which I could also have an opportunity at if they call me in to help get everything set up for open in the store. Um, and so learning how to not so much leadership, but just kind of take the reins a little bit and delegate and, and make sure that things are done. Right. Um, I'm a little bit OCD and I'm like, okay, well, the two I see has trained me this way. This is how it needs to be done because that's what makes them happy. You're right. And trying to convey that information, it's really diff. It's harder than I thought. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because you're working with multiple different people. You, you way yeah. you talk to some people, you can't talk to the others. You have to come in, you read your room and like, you know, you might be, a level three leader to somebody, but you might be a level one to the other. So you have to learn, yeah. read the room yeah. and to get results. And you want, the idea is to make people want to work for you, want to, yeah. to let you lead them, but you have to earn that. You, you have to build that credibility. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Adam, I'm trying to just convey, this. like, I know how to get everything done. I can work in that store on my own and I have quite a few times mm -hmm. to get everything done but trying to split up the tasks and then explain that this is why we need to do this a certain way. It's hard. It's really hard for me. Yeah. yeah. Like in the back of my mind, I got it down. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. You just have to figure out how you can get that idea in your mind into their mind. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Adam, I don't know if you heard me. I see you come in. It's good to see you, buddy. Yeah. Uh, I, that, now this is one reason why I started the second live stream so I can get a group of other people that don't like getting up at nine o'clock in the morning, <laughs> my Saturday ones, you know. Oh, hello, Adam. Yes, I know people like that where I work. Not only have they been there a lot less than me and talked to me like I'm a newbie, but they think they own the place. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, that's what this guy was like. And then he ended up leaving. So he quit. Um, but the last two shifts that I did with him, he basically, um, so the, the second to last, he just stood there like a lump, didn't say a damn word to me, yeah. didn't speak to any customers, did the bare minimum. Right. He stood there unboxing stock all day with a sour look on his face. Right. And then the next the next week he's come in and I'm like, hey, dude, how are you? you know, good morning. This is what we got going on today. This is what we need to do. Um he basically just did his own thing, started unboxing stock again in the corner like he did last week. I said, well, okay, so you, you're ignoring what I've asked you to do. Um, you've ignored my instruction and you're just going to stand there and unbox stock all day. That's okay. I will, go, I will now go and do everything else. <laughs> and I've walked off and I started to recover part of the store. Within two minutes, I get a phone call from the manager. It was his day off, who says, oh, so now your lunch cover is now going home. Are you going to be okay? Because he said he's sick. Oh, boy. Yeah, so he's just called him, oh, I'm sick, I'm going home. And then by the time I was on the phone for maybe five minutes with the manager, in that time, the other guy had booked it out of the store. Yeah. So I didn't even know that he was gone. Right. Um, which I, it's a safety thing. It's so bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then before the next weekend, he turned around and quit. Very good. Yeah. He didn't like taking, it wasn't like I'm going, hey, you've got to do this right now. Going, hey, man, we've got this, 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 and this to do today. Can you start on this so I can go start on that? 
Right. Trying to, you know, divide and conquer to make sure that everything's done in the store, mm. which I think is quite fair. I wasn't trying to be mean about it. I'm just like, okay, this has got to be done. Right. And he didn't like it. So. Right. But what do you do? <laughs> See, oh, uh, what I still did over a two thousand dollar day because he left. Right. Yeah, and yeah. I got everything done, and the store was clean by the time I left. Yeah. So that tells me I can do the job on my own, but it's yeah, nice yeah. to have the launch cover. Absolutely, absolutely. But be careful, unless you're up for the task. The more lean you run, meaning. Uh, if you think you can run that 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 business leaner, meaning less people and still get the same job mm. done, you start expecting that all the time and put more load. Yeah, on. I like what uh, Adam said here. This is what his version of PetSmart told him. Yeah, the Cooley Loach eating your right snails. I've had a couple Cooley Cooley Loaches, and there is no way that they're going to eat a Nerite snail. <laughs> That's like saying oh, Jack that's funny. is going to eat an Oscar. Not going to happen. Yeah, like, I don't want to deal with BS. I just want to go to work, get my job done and go home. Um, but unfortunately, dealing with people is a massive requirement of my job. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean... And, you know, the more yeah. you get the experience like this and, and, and you deal with it, the better it's going to make you for leading people. So Absolutely. it's a, a double-edged sword. It is, yeah, <laughs> very much so. Imagine stress working in aquatic sport, fish shows, and maintain official inside politics. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the people. And Craig's right. Let the manager deal with it. <laughs> yeah. It's above yeah. my pay grade. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're wanting to move up into a higher position then that's something you'll probably kind of want to tackle i actually yeah. enjoy i enjoy confrontation with people i love it <laughs> june hi june hey june and look at that salience at the bottom of the chat guys <laughs> yeah Yay. well you and i are flapping <laughs> our thumbs enjoying it <laughs> there you go june if you'd like to come up Um, I was waiting for Garcia. I thought Garcia was going to pop up. I thought he might too. He's not afraid to do it. But he just must not be in the mood tonight. Yeah. But yeah. At the end of the day, it's all experience, and I'm more than happy to learn. And I um, throughout the whole lot of issues with the other coworker, I was talking to management positions including my own manager and who I see in that store um, about, you know, how do I handle this? What do I do? Yeah. Um, this is what I'm trying to achieve. This is what's happening and it's frustrating me and it's actually affecting me. As I was, I was losing sleep over it and no one should be like that. No, no, you gotta, you gotta learn if you, you know, to, you know, leave. I know you hear it a lot, separate your home and work life. And I work a job right yeah. now. And that's pretty much, almost impossible to do customers calling you at home texting you i just had it tonight six yeah. six o'clock hey man is this piece of machine you're going to be up tomorrow well i don't know i wasn't there today but you know yeah. <laughs> that's difficult um and now i understand why a lot of people will have a second phone as a work phone mm -hmm. so you know once that you know once that five o'clock hit you turn that phone off and it's that separating work from home yeah, and a lot of people. Um, do. It's that's becoming a real thing. Yeah, that's all I have is a work phone. Once I got this job and got a work phone, I got rid of my personal phone to save money, and they're fine. With oh, that. there you go. Yeah, but, yeah, but that makes sense. It's it's it, it was used to be real bad, but now that I have pretty much go to one customer every day now, it's not so bad. And yeah. you know, I put fires out. But see, we go on call. Each one of the technicians have to take their turn going on call. So when that happens, you can't turn it off. Oh, yeah, that's fair enough, too, yeah. And this was, uh, Adam, certainly appreciate what you said here. Babies are yeah. adorable. They are adorable, June. I only saw one. I don't think I saw the other one. 
That's okay, buddy. Take your time with that. Like I said, there's no rush. Uh, you don't have to do it at all if you don't want to. Uh, you know, you can't find it. You don't feel like fussing with it. Don't worry about it. It is not a big okay. deal. That big angel, the the platinum yeah. one. Yes. The platinum is the one you can see. I love that blue and white one you got. Well, he's just white. It's just, the blue comes through from the light. I know, but I'm going to keep calling him blue because it looks like. <laughs> Well, this is this is salt and that's pepper. And uh the ram is the brain. <laughs> there you go, that's a better view. I just fed you guys, knock it off. <laughs> You're chonkers, you gotta go on a diet. Oh, there's four. I didn't find them. My mom brought um, them. Oh, yeah, yeah. B4 bought them out. That was funny. Angelfish is a fish that has really grown on me. I like them a lot. I think I have like seven of them now. And um, these two have so much personality. It is ridiculous. <laughs> They're the way they swim. I call them the squirrels of the fish world because they're real robotronic and move real quick and, you know, you're poking at each other. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're faster than I thought. Oh, yeah. They'll get going. I really enjoy yeah. my angel fish. I like how they um, poke at each other. They don't mess with anybody else but their own kind. They're always poking at the leaves and the way they go to the substrate and pick food. They're just, they're yeah, all like this guy right now he's just kind of pick pecking around and you have one angel left oh i don't know if you guys ever watch adam's live he goes live i jump over there whenever i can and i always enjoy talking with him. you talk about a, a very nice person adam has got a really good personality and, and is nothing but respect and one of them oh, lovely one of them guys that you know doesn't seem to have a bad bone in his body yeah and he's got one of them i believe the flugel flex tanks and he wants to get oh them. okay oh, zoomies you're trying to get my attention over there i got two of those june you're talking about the black scars with the red eyes laura never liked angels until i started to see the nice one that dan has on the on in otherwise animals might have convinced yeah they're they're awesome the one of my favorite I want, I want the double blacks the double got, blacks are gorgeous i got two of them and they are <gasps> the most aggressive out of any of them oh my god i would love a double black um i kind of just want one of all of them yeah <laughs> just one of each you know i want a blue one yeah I do like how this guy comes up blue under the blue light. He yeah, has that sheen great. to him. Mm -hmm. The platinums are real nice. Uh, oh, no, I appreciate you, Adam. Anybody that comes I in. I think they're the veil tail. And shares. They've got you the do. nice little tendrils on the back. Yeah, they're just see like he's pecking at your substrate. Yeah. They're fun. And they're hardy, too. Like, was it, I always quarantine all my fish when I bring them home and I put them to when they were just babies in there I started with two or four or something like that. And they all made it through fine. Um, my, the only fish I have trouble with is small fish. Yeah. I, I have a lot more trouble die. with the small ones. Yes. Yeah, they just die. Like, why did you just die? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, come on now. I found, I think auto sink lists are kind of sensitive too. I had I bought two when I bought mine. One of them got like a fuzzy fin and he passed away. But the other one is doing amazing. Yeah. That's I have like a with the auto sinkless and the blue the electric blue rams, I've got like a fifty percent success rate because I bought two of each. And one of each passed away. So All right. but the others are doing amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah, I got. Um, they're they're cool. They're for sure. I need I need some algae eaters for my fifty five gallon tiger bar tank. Mm -hmm. What I need. I want to get the Siamese algae eaters, but nobody has them. Yeah. So Adam's going to be getting a twenty four gallon. And the flex oh, is a thirteen, nice. so it's a nice upgrade. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, 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 I think I don't know if he cares that I share his information out. But the only reason why I know this is because he shared it on his live. But he's not allowed to get too many tanks right now because I think his parents won't allow it. I could be wrong. Okay. Correct, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, Adam. But uh, like, because my recommendation to you is, and you probably already know this, is get the biggest <laughs> tank you can now yeah absolutely <laughs> even if it's just one big tank get your big tank yeah like a 75 gallon and i would recommend a 75 over 55 the footprint is just so much better and they're still the same at four foot long all righty jesse well i'm gonna jump back down into chat here and i'll be lurking a little bit i've got things to get done well, absolutely that's fine someone, someone come up here and tag in because uh I can't be here all day. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming up and hanging out with me. Maybe June will jump Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. Thanks for letting me come up and hang out with you. No, absolutely. Anytime. And I'm going <laughs> to put the link in the chat again for anybody who wants to come up and join me. Adam, if you want to come up, anybody, Skeddy, June. See yeah, there it is, Adam. Just tap it. Come on up, buddy. That's what these streams are all about. I like to have people come up and, and chat with me and show me their tanks and chat. So tap that link. Come on up, my friend. I would, but my camera is busted, and I don't have tanks, just terrariums. Well, I don't really care that you don't have fish tanks, Laura. But, I mean, if your camera is good enough, because you can change your camera from front to back. So if the back's cracked, you can go to settings, flip the camera to the front. If you'd like to come up, that's totally fine. The fact that you don't have fish tanks don't bother me. I just like chatting. And Adam, you're more than welcome to come up. As, yeah, I can have like six people up here. So the more the merrier. But no pressure. You don't have to if you don't want to. Um. So unless someone comes up, I'll just get to my topic of what I was talking about with the goldfish. Uh, I've had more trouble with fancy goldfish than I do any other fish I've ever owned. The Other than small fish, they don't seem to do very well. Now, I can't say that. I think neon tetras, I've kept them for a long while, and I never have issues out of my neon tetras. They seem pretty hardy, but your platies, your mollies, your guppies, um, uh, even getting into the um, autosynclus, for some reason, they just die. Other than those small fish, I have more trouble with fancy goldfish than I do anything with bloat. I can fix it, but it always seems to give me trouble. Let's bring Adam up. Can you hear hey. me? Yeah, I'm just getting my light on. <laughs> it's dark. It is dark indeed. If it wants to turn on. Did the bus take this? Oh, no. oh, there you go. It's working. Right. Turn on, please. Damn, that's bright. <laughs> nice to finally meet you, Jesse. Yeah, absolutely. Face to face. Yeah, it's, it's been a long time coming for sure. Turn that side, please. Right. There you go. Right, that's bright. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happens when you've got a bad tripod. Yeah, it's good to see you. What time is it over there? Oh, um... It's pretty late, but I've got a week off work, so I'm, I'm making the most of it when it comes to content and um, speaking to people that I don't get to speak to, like yourself. Oh, cool. Well, I appreciate it. Like I was saying, I always, uh, for a while now, I've been doing a Saturday morning live stream at 9 a.m., but I added yeah. this one in so I can catch a different crowd and, and talk with them. So And so far, it's worked great. Like yeah. you coming on and, and such, so I get to I get to really talk to uh, different people and have them come up. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's good to finally hop in alive because again, it's usually around this time I'd probably be asleep, but I'm glad to have caught it. Who was on in 
the last panel, by the way. Um, that that is, you'll see your name there in chat. It's called if you can see chat. I don't know. Collaboration of curiosities. Her name is Adele, and she's from over in Australia. Oh, okay, yeah. I think Adele was in um, the chat on the last live I was in with Jeff and Arnold. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's, so. she she always she's been up my life. She's fun. There she is. Oh, uh, Shady. I do like Aqua Clears. They're probably my favorite hanging the back out there. But that one there broke, so I use it for parts, and I actually turned it into like a little bit of a shelf, as you can see for the fish room. So I thought it was some pretty good, appropriate decor. <laughs> you were saying um, before I hopped on then that you've got issues with smaller fish, like dying quite often. Um, what what would you say is like the smallest fish you're keeping at the moment? Well, I think you said tiger barbs. So throughout the years of keeping fish, I, I like them big. I like them small. Um, but, and I don't want to say they die often because I've successfully kept a lot of smaller fish right now. I have resboras, um, platys, neon tetras. I got zebra danios, longfin danios. Um, yeah. there's ember tetras, um, and they're all doing great. Yeah. But, but I do have a lot of small fish. Like I rescued some like platies from a woman in the neighborhood and yeah. they, they were doing great. They've all died off since then, except for these two beautiful pepper ones. Yeah. Beautiful orange. And, um, but they just, the, the, the little fish, they just die off. You know, they're said to live three to four years, some six, but yeah. I never seem to get them to live long. And my water quality is good. I feed them high quality foods. I don't overfeed. They get Vitachem once a week. I'm I even stepping a, a step up and giving them multivitamins. I, 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 can, I can imagine that they're getting served in luxury in your household for sure. But I think it's like a combination of things. When we get fish like from a retailer, from like a shop, a lot of the time they've either, some of them could sit there for months or even a year. And then it, when they're ready to be sold as well, I think they're almost a year old, most fish anyway. They're not just fry unless you go to the likes of a pet smart or pets at home. Um, they tend to, you know, make sure that they're at a decent size and be able to be sold. So at that point, you're getting them at, I always say this to people that get like fighter fish or beta fish, like it's really hard because you get attached to them. But like at the same time, for them to be ready to be sold, they're, they're like almost a year old. And then with the genetic issues with a lot of fish these days, mm -hmm. they don't live as long, especially the smaller ones. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you're right with what you say. I think a lot of them are inbred. Yeah, and, you know, you get the bent spines and the different diseases that come along with that. And and so, you know, especially because you know what are these breeders doing? They're trying to make money. So now we're adding crap into the genes so they're they look like a rainbow or they're this color. Yeah. Is, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, what was confusing for me is um, I, I went up to Blackpool in the UK, if anyone's from the UK, um, and we have our chain called Pets at Home. And compared to PetSmart, I'd say it isn't as bad of what I've seen of PetSmart. Like, I, it, I just see all these horror stories everywhere. Um, I feel like when people are giving advice in there they, they're reading off a book they have been taught something to say to people but it's it's still off and then it it gets lost in chinese whispers basically but um yeah. they sell they've started to sell fish that are quote unquote uncommon or even rare at some point so celestial pale daniels now the popularity in that fish is like spiked it's went through the roof and because of that, now they're in so much demand, I've, I've finally seen them in like a pet's at home, which is, imagine walking into PetSmart and you find CPDs. Like, I think a lot of people in the chat are go, wow, because the pricing was really good. But this is the issue. Now that they're now available in there, the gene pool and the genetics of this fish is going to get worse within the next few years, I think. Because yeah. I could already see a lot of deformities in the fish in them tanks. And considering the quote-unquote rare fish if they're now getting them mass produced it's the quality of the fish is going to go down for sure yeah 
and I can't remember who I was talking to on one of my live streams. I was talking about killifish, another fish that's really beautiful and colorful. And, and she was like a killifish connoisseur. And one yeah. thing she told me is their colors are natural. They're like that in the wild. And yeah. hers are wild caught. Now, Silver Creek Products here, Tommy, he's in the chat. He's He's got big into native species. He likes to keep fish that are in his native area, in the lakes, ponds, rivers, whatever. That, that's really cool. So, um, but I don't know. I like to quarantine all my new fish, regardless where I get them from, because I definitely don't want to spread anything to my current display tanks and healthy fish. Yeah, for sure. Because obviously, you don't you don't know what's in them waters. There could be contaminants and, and many other things. Obviously, a lot of fish are wild caught, but then they're gone through quarantine and other processes. So, yeah, yeah. Um is what true to everything june uh, the, the the quality of the fish are you, are you referring to to me a fish tank is a quarantine tank yeah because he he's tommy's all about the natural tanks and and he like like he likes the father fish method but tommy's taking a step up from there he, he makes his own substrate he'll, yeah. he'll, do, he'll do refugiums like true refugiums where there's they're dirted and he grows plants in his refugiums and it's a substrate and dirt of his own concoction that he puts together because he raises chickens uh, wow. dogs. so he takes all that for as fertilizer and waste and puts it together and makes substrates out of it and that's how he wow. keeps the tanks very very natural uh, uh homesteader is what he is i think i have seen as this channel before i need to give it a, a check out because I, I, I think i've seen a mixed in the lives of all kind of tight knit aren't we so i'll definitely have to check his content out because that sounds very interesting to me um do they not call the deformity see this is the issue with these massive retailers um with these massive chain stores they're not like an lfs where they'll get something in and go okay that fish is clearly deformed its quality of life ain't great we're gonna call it um, for me, it's the same. If I buy a fish, I find that there's a deformity. If I if it breeds and then then there's more of that, then that's that's a bad thing. But I I I always find it difficult calling fish in the first place. But with these massive places, they don't really care. They just see it as a transaction. So you'll get a bag of fish. That you it, unless you're like monitoring what they're scooping out, you won't see. And you'll get home, you'll look, and then you've got all these, you know eyes that are really bulging out or bent spines because again as you said there's a lot of interbreeding and um, the the quality of life as well this is why i like the likes of dan's fish where he he shows everything and he he also like ethically brings in fish makes make sure that like whatever he is selling and that's why his stuff is a bit more expensive because it's well looked after you know it like he's inspecting everything or the people that are working for him so that kind of thing i think needs to be um implemented in the hobby a lot more for sure yeah and i don't think they're going to catch them all either as fast as they're trying to do this it's like you know just like you think about you doing something at home let's say you spill a cup of rice on the floor yeah do you really think you're going to get them all no that that's the issue there's so many fish in these large containers and then they traveled around again and in that time the, the fish that have been bred could be in good condition but if they're kept in poor conditions and transport and stuff like that they can get deformities in um, multiple bloodlines is a must of course um i think that's important for anyone that's even a uh, breeding for profit in themselves you i think a lot of you probably already know that you need to get multiple fish from different places maybe to have a larger gene pool um, we recently had a massive fertilizer spill that killed almost 800,000 fish in a 45 mile selection. Wow, that that's that's really sad. Yeah, that's yeah, sad. damn. People, it, 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 people exactly, and I think things like this, um, it happens in the ocean, and you see these oil spills. But then when you see them in the likes of, um, you know, the South American countries where we all get like our tropical fish from. It, 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 it's it is sad and i guess it it's good that like there's um a lot of local hobbyist breeding fish and keeping them alive because otherwise they'd be extinct i, I said this in a live previously uh, we have a zoo not far from around called chester zoo 
uh, I'll I'll sing all the praises. They do this project where they bring endangered species of tropical fish, breed them in the zoo, and then they'll repopulate them again in the wild. <clears throat> yeah. I did with my... Oh, you breed cats. Yeah, uh, sounds like she... Uh... She, yeah, it sounds like she got different partners from different areas. Cool. <laughs> Don't forget to blame your local government for the use of chemical fertilizers, forcing farmers to use them. Yeah, but I mean, I'm sure we can go into it. If you, uh, I, think, I think anyone could go into it and it'd be an endless topic to talk mm. about. You know, I think we all know that um, these things are like, out of our hands, especially when you've got authority, <laughs> and then obviously, as you said, there are chemicals going into water and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it's definitely not a great thing, and I'm sure there's a lot. I, I like that I'm seeing a lot more of these uh, projects going on where people are actually. If you sign a DNR email, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad that there's a lot more things like this for sure. Um. But yeah, I, I'll switch topic. I feel like a hijack for a moment. This is your laugh at the end of the day, Jesse. No, um, absolutely. I like it. I love the chat. This is why I like to have people up because I can sit here all day long and talk about the same subjects. We all talk about the fish keeping hobby. And I like bringing other people up like yourself and chatting like we are a crazy conversation, uh, camaraderie, you name it. So you're not hijacking it. This is what I want. No worries. Um, the nasty mess that key ridge made small drop in a bucket exactly um but i was gonna hop onto the topic then um you were saying that you wanted an algae eater for your um tiger barb tank what about tiger barb tank um you were saying you wanted an uh, algae al algae yeah algae algae yeah the, <laughs> the yeah. uk versus us um Dialogue. I want, yeah, um, I want I'll the Siamese them. algae eaters, but no one around has them, and I'd have to buy those online. And I don't want to. They're really cool fish, but I think the issue with them is that when they're young, the brilliant algae eaters or algae eaters, but once they get bigger, they get lazy and they'll just kind of lounge around. So I think with with tiger barbs, it's hard to find something that will take a not not take a beating, but it, it can hold its own because they are very active nippy fish so i'd probably say i wouldn't recommend a pleco because i've seen a common pleco get absolutely destroyed by tiger barbs and um, that that was not fun that was in a family friends I, I visited the place and he went oh i don't know why it's uh, got missing chunks I went, it's the, the tiger barbs <laughs> the demons and um, so i'd recommend uh, i put in the chat pandagora yeah i uh a tiger barbs is a fish i've always kept they're one of my favorites um, I have kept a uh, bristlenose pleco in with them with no issue. Yes. Um, my common plecos, I wouldn't imagine would be an issue at all, but they're too big for that 55 gallon tank. I think it's down to the size, of, like say if you've got a big fish and with the common plecos, the fins are a lot bigger. As soon as they see something flowing and moving all the time, they'll, they'll, yeah. they have that piranha effect. It only takes one to take a bite and then they all start taking a bite. Yeah, and then with with a with a bristle nose, I'm sure like they are confident, but they can also hide. Like they're not stupid. When you've got a big fish like that, it's it's a, it's a sitting duck. Yeah, but, stress um, stress them out and kill them. Exactly, and um, I, that's why I say pandagar because I've moved it now into my girlfriend's tank. If you check my stuff out, I've I've got a tank set up in here. Now I'm living my hobby through other people at this point because obviously I, I've only got this. I'm going to upgrade it tomorrow. I'm tearing this down. It's quite emotional. I've had it like five years now, almost as long as I've been a hobby. And um, yeah, I've. Well, you're not going to keep that tank too? Um, I'm looking to see if I can give it to someone for the time being until I get my new place and then I can. Because the thing is, I've taught it. it you know through watching my content i've torn the back out there's holes in the lid the light that's on top isn't even the the original light so if i put that for sale i'd be lucky if i get 20 pounds or right if, if not 30 dollars yeah i'd be very lucky to even get that so might as well um, keep it 
Yeah, I may as well keep it and try and rehome it to someone that is like a friend of mine, and then it can get back to me eventually. Right. Because it is like it's it's now a part of me. I'm looking at it now, and I'm kind of sad because I've added new fish in. I haven't shown anyone what they are yet. Um, I did put a poll saying gold tetra, but when I went on that trip yesterday, um, I found something a tetra that you don't get to see too often, and I got them at a very very good price. And I'll I'll keep it hush on that. But um, okay, okay. But, so you're but, yeah. making us wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like I want to build a bit of suspense because I the, I feel sad and like I'm betraying people because I've done the poll. But as soon as I've seen these fish, I've never seen them with my own eyes. I've only seen a price tag of when they were left over and they were selling for... Um, I'll put into perspective, I've got the raccoon tetra. They were £8.50 a fish, so probably 10 to $12 per tetra. So imagine a group of seven, it adds up. So it's around a similar price range, and they were, if not double that in yeah. the place that I seen them local to me. So seeing them for around six pound fifty, under ten dollars. So the the it's like half the price. Even so, I was I was I had I had to get them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm. I was going to tear the tank down today, but I brought I brought them in, put them in last night, late last night. So I thought I want to let them sit in for a day. I don't want to put them in, take them out straight away, stress them out, cause it, and then wipe all my fish out. I, I'm I'm playing it smart, um, and and taking it progressively down. But so yeah. you don't you don't have the new tank yet. So it's getting delivered tomorrow. I've bought it already. Um, I've got I've got the wood here. I don't want to get into wood conversations because it always goes west when people decide to have a filthy mind. But yeah, I've got this piece of bog wood that looks a bit like a shotgun. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I've got this other one. Um, this, I really like it. It's, it's like a small tree stump. Oh, nice. So like, that's going to be really what, nice. What kind of wood is that? Because I have a few different pieces of driftwood that look like that one it, it was listed as it, i think if anyone were to buy this from anywhere else it's called bogwood i don't know the exact name i think it begins with a j okay or, or a p it's either one of them um yeah but I'd, it could also go under um if you were to purchase it online corbo route maybe uh, but although no, I don't think it would. Corbo root has like it's usually like this, but then on the inside it's hollow for the catfish. Yeah. Um so I, I, it, there is a couple holes in this. I might try and carve a bit more out, maybe, so the pleco could live in there. But yeah, it's a nice piece. Um but I, I, I don't know the name of it. Yeah. It's there's so many of them. You know the one I, the the driftwood I at least like is Mopani driftwood. Now mm. it looks cool, but the issue with it, unless you want that look, is it is so full of tannins, it's going to yeah. take a freaking year to get it all out. <laughs> <laughs> that that that's the issue with a lot of woods. Um, a, f a friend of mine, he set up the tank. He's put AccuClear in. He's put carbon. He's put everything in there. The water's still yellow. Yeah, uh, and that's good. And for like the fish tannins are good for the fish. Oh yeah, it's you know it's amazing for breeding, amazing, amazing for the fish's health. But mm -hmm. if you're setting up a tank for your own pleasure, you you know if you want it to look clear and it's not clear, then it's a uh, definitely uh, <laughs> not great. Yeah, it's um, just seeing what. They're talking about cats, and then we've got. She says, "Mopani is is freaking expensive here." Well, I can I'm, see why. It's big, usually big pieces, and and they're just large, like almost dense pieces. Now, what I've been looking into is things like around here we have what's called myrtle crepe trees. Yeah, I guess that's something you can use in an aquarium. And we've got them all over the place here, but I I don't know if I can just cut a limb off and stick it in the tank, or if there's a process. Maybe I got to boil it or something because the insides are still alive, right? So yeah, can I cut that off and just put it in the tank. You know, I it's, don't know. 
it's really difficult and like it's the reason I haven't yet like went out my way to go and source any natural wood. I know I know um my friend the AV Scapes that I've made a collab with, he's sourced a lot of his stuff naturally. Um he lives in Calgary in Canada. So he he's he sourced all the rocks off um the wind farm that he works at and then um all the wood for, like was scattered round and it I think the process is is that if you're getting wood I wouldn't chop it off a tree. I'd probably find something that's been like left there dried up. It's definitely dead. Yeah. And then boil it, make sure that there's no contamin contaminants. Um another person, MS Aquascaping, he set up a tank recently. He he used some natural moss and then all these like um termites or some kind of bugs started all as he filled it up with water they all started crawling out <laughs> so yeah. imagine setting up your tanky and just got all the Ugh, just, uh, well, yeah mommy would probably like that and some of these guys might like the girls in here they're probably ooh, food yeah great great fish food yeah for sure but if you've got it in a little nano tank with shrimp then you're like Ugh, oh no <laughs> yeah and that's and I do have cherry shrimp in some of my tanks as well, and I do enjoy having the shrimp. I'd, it'd be cool to get some blue ones and some of them, uh, what are them yellow ones? What do they call them? Yellow shrimp. It, you can't. You can't. And, and, and you're on it. You're on it. Um, I've I've got the names shrimp, escaping me. Blue dream shrimp, cherry shrimp, and then uh, they're all in the same bowl. I know some people will be like, "How could you? you you've made like." rainbow skittles tank but uh, yeah but um to me it's like an, it's a little ecosystem setup so if they're just breeding i don't really care um mm. but i i mean i would have liked to breed them and have them one color but um there is no way i can get a net in there it's like a big brute spider wood thing in the middle so i just can't get anything yeah out. whatever's in there is in there permanently so when I started out with the cherry shrimp, there was literally four of them and I had them in with a male betas and now I have 20,000. <laughs> There's a lot of them. I moved them to another tank. Did the betas they, not eat them? They, no, they did. I have a short out there from a while ago where it showed them a beta eating them, but it's, they reproduce faster than the betas can eat them. So it's never an issue. Yeah, so that it's a good little ecosystem setup. I remember when I first started the hobby, I put a, a beta fish in, I had some uh, smaller monos, and then I come in one day and he swam right up to the glass, holding the torn in half a mono shrimp like a happy puppy, wiggling yeah. his tail. I was like, damn it. <laughs> I was like, it's so cute, but I, I hate you. <laughs> That's funny. Because after that, the, the tank just started getting covered in algae, algae and I was like, oh. Yeah. It. But uh, that, that, that's the thing. Beta fish, that they can either be your best friend or your worst enemy. And I think um, the bigger the tank and the more cover you've got, I think you've got more chance of having other inhabitants and shrimp and that surviving. But um, small tanks, it's enough. <laughs> yeah, like... I made this 10 gallon dirted sand cap tank down here and I packed it full of plants and the plants are amazing. Um, for small tanks, I won't go any other way. Now I will always do the dirted sand cap tank. It's literally maintenance free other than maybe topping your water off every once in a while. No filter needed. The nitrates mm -hmm. stay like five PPM. The only thing I have in there is a bunch of cherry shrimp, yeah. and, but they keep coming and coming. But the plants are literally busting out of the tank. They're growing up through the lid, and there's absolutely no algae on anything. It's just a beautiful wow. green lush plant, and it's all because of that dirt under that sand cap. And wow. the plants, the, it's controlled by the plants. Wow. Yeah, I, I believe, like, if you have it fully planted from the get-go and you, you've got a stable setup, as you said, algae is no problem. I think my issue, what happened with this, where it went wrong, is that it was stable for a long time. Then I tried to turn it from low tech to high tech, or not high tech, but I tried to start injecting CO2 and stuff, and it completely unstabilized everything, and then there was blackbeard algae and all that, and it's taken me a long time to get over that. And at that point, because I've starved putting um, liquid fertilizer in and stuff, 
half the plants are now dead regardless of the algae problems. So it, yeah. it's, it's sometimes if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing, you know? Exactly, exactly. And I know with that CO2, you got to have them drips just right. If they're too much or they're too fast, it'll take your fish out too. For sure. So I don't know anything about CO2 systems. I've never used it. I really don't plan on it. <laughs> yeah, that, the one that I used, it wasn't like a big high-tech one. It was just like a little package one. I think it's it's the equivalent. I think Tropica, the brand Tropica made it. It's called System Bio, but it's the equivalent of getting like a Coke bottle. I've seen them DIY videos where people put baking soda in and um, the activator, and then they just shake it around. It turns into a gel, and then you just let it go by itself and it's not a lot of co2 where you have to monitor it it just goes um but i i think the issue with them is that they run out a lot quicker and they're yeah. not producing enough co2 for a difference and if the levels are fluctuating all the time you're just gonna introduce algae i think especially if you've got bright lighting too so i think for the next setup but when i set up this tank tomorrow I think I'm going to just stay clear and just stay to liquid fits and root tabs. Absolutely. But um, Always. Yeah, maybe you could try one of these dirted tanks. You just put like an inch of dirt and cap it with a couple inches of sand. As long as you don't have any fish that dig up the sand, pack it full of plants, and you don't have to worry about it. It stays beautiful all the time. I, I was in – what I usually do for my setups is I'll put aqua soil – as the bottom what where the dirt would be um and then i'll put these root tabs and the root tabs i've got i think they turn into like clay it's like a clay root tab these sticks mm -hmm. and then um i'll cap it off with the sand i haven't i didn't do it on this one but i've done it on the, the last few it's worked well but i know the sand one works really well because um the guy harry visited i wish he made content because these tanks he's been the hobby seven months and he's got eight tanks. Yeah. So that that's that's what would have happened if I if I was allowed the freedom when I first started. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm gonna get a video when I go there on Monday because I didn't have the time. By God, these tanks are that the pristine. They look like something that would be in, you know, the likes of MD fish tanks or like some or George Farmer esque stuff because it's it's not high tech. They're all like, as you said, dated with, with sand capping on top and the, the unbelievable. I can't yep. describe it. And the fish are thriving as well. He's got, he started with three panda quarries. He's now got 26. Yeah. Because it's in this big setup. He's got garamis and everything like that that could eat them. But the behavior I've never seen at the panda quarries, they'll dig into the underneath the bogwood and lay the eggs underneath it. Yeah. And everything's surviving in there. Yeah. So he's just got a farm of Corydoras now in every tank. Corys <laughs> are just breeding. And I'm like, I've I've been keeping fish five years and uh, my pistogramma thinks it's caviar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they'll pick it right off the glass. That's so funny. I was like, it, it's unbelievable that he's been doing it for such a short time and everything's thriving. I, I was, I was, low-key jealous and how well it's gone for him it's <laughs> like funny. there's me i remember my worst mistake that I, I, I we've all had tank wipes early on and then obviously through the bad experience and the trauma you then go okay so this is what not to do in the future i was treating a fish and when treating the fish i treated the tank and there wasn't any air stone in there at the time after that out of the air stone and then i made another stick onto that but i won't go into that that's another story yeah um, and when you're treating the tank you've got to be careful because the medication could just kill all your plants and when you've only got a small bit of uh water flow like on the base fluval flex before i decided to mutilate it um it it killed all them so then the la the, the oxygen was depleted of water yep. Yep. And overnight I woke up, half my fish were dead, they're all gasping. Yeah, anytime you med, you always have to add air stone, something, unless you have like a FX4 that really, or a power head. That uh, is, you gotta yeah. Have something, you know. Uh, Laura, to answer your question, I use the, um, you got to use an organic soil. So I just got the organic soil they had at my local Lowe's, and I, and I got so much of it. 
I could probably build 20 more tanks. I have so much of this organic soil and it works fantastic. And do do you, do you save it at all? No. Or do I, you just throw it in? So I set my tank up and I did a video on it. Um, but I put it in there and once I get as much as I want in there, what I do is I wet it down a little bit. Now I've made the mistake. You don't want to fill the tank with water. You just want to dampen the soil enough yes. that when you cover it and the plants will stick in it, and then you're going to put down like a dish or something when you go to fill it or a flat rock. So it doesn't destroy it. Cause the idea behind the sand cap is to keep the dirt sealed underneath. You don't want it leaching into your water column. Right. Plus yes. that also, by sealing it off with the sand, lets the nutrients last longer. So a lot of people are in love with all these fluval. What's the name of the fluval? Uh, stratum. Stratum. That stuff. You, it's great. so bad. It's good for about the first few months, but then it loses all of its nutrients unless you cap it with sand. It lasts longer. I learned that from Father Fish. Father Fish. Um, no, I've, I've. I, I I can definitely vouch for like Father Fish's methods are really good. I, I recently watched a video of his, or oh, it was a short, where he said, dead fish, bury it. <laughs> he said, you got a dead fish, put it in the substrate. I was like, you know what, I'll try that on the ecosystem bowl with the shrimp. So one of the shrimp died of old age, buried it in, put it underneath a plant, boom. Yeah. It, yeah. it, it is natural fertilizer. Now, I wouldn't, obviously, if you've got an Oscar tank, put an Oscar <laughs> under the sand. I don't think that would work. But if you've got some nano fish with a deep, like, substrate layer, you can just bang it in there. And, and, and as long as it's capped off and it's not leaching no ammonia, it's has to be water. Yeah. Um, it's definitely something that is not spoken about, but a, a cool method that I didn't think of. Yeah. Actually, I can't remember who I was talking to. But they said the same thing. You think you've got a little dead fish like that, just shove it down in underneath the plant. And then the plant will absorb all the ammonia and stuff that comes out of it and feed your plants. Makes sense. Stephen, I didn't get a chance to say hello and thank you for coming in. I certainly appreciate seeing you. Craig's is moving again. That's why he's talking about moving his aquariums to a new house. This will be his second move. Um, so he's moving to another house. And Tommy says all that soil that might happen to leach through, he saves it and puts it out in the wood mulch. <laughs> but I think Tommy also uses mulch in his aquarium, so it's a double-edged sword. Wow. I could be wrong. Tommy, I think I would want to do that with what I have available. I've used the I've used like quite a few different aqua soils and I used a I think it was like a cheap branded one. Then I've tried the stratum. Um stratum it just never worked from day one. It just didn't. And right. I've used I've used root tabs and everything to try and it just didn't. It I don't know what was up with it. It's, so every time I've used the, I've got the, the bag of this here. Uh, this Tropica Aqua Soil, it's really good when capped off and lasts like a really long time as well. Again, when it's capped off, as you said. Mm -hmm. um, but I do want to give it a go with the soil. Um, I think I'll definitely do that on my next set. Um, not in this setup, probably one in the future. It's, just for the longevity yeah. side of it. Because I think um, anything I set up here now, I'm not going to be here for... I don't think I'll be here in two years. So whatever I set up here, if it is going to be moved, it's going to be torn down. So I'm not going to be too fussed about what happens inside it because it's makes not going to have a long, a, a long lifespan, really. Yeah, it makes sense. You don't want to have to move all that extra weight. Um but it's a great way to go. Like I would love to set up like a 125 with a dirted uh, sand cap tank, and and because the plants just grow beautifully, you don't need fertilizers. You don't need anything extra when you set that up. You're good to go. Like some people do it, like Patty's Aquatics and Father Fish has his own recipe. They don't just use the dirt. I can't remember the name of that other crap. They they sprinkle on the dirt before they cap it. I didn't even do that. I just used the organic soil and capped it, and these you can't stop these plants. They're gorgeous. I think it's um, a root tab crushed down into like a fine powder, and they'll sprinkle it on. I've there's seen a, that method. There's a, there's a name for it, and I think it starts with a C. Uh, Carum Cal or calcium. Ca I I don't know what they sprinkle on there. You don't have to, but like they do it just for extra 
whatever. I just don't even worry about that. Because I'll tell you what, the first time I put that organic soil in, my, in this 10 gallon when I was setting it up and I got it wet, I could see all these little bugs crawling around in there. I'm like, here's what it is. I capped it with sand. I didn't have an issue. And I just, I'm telling you, these freaking plants are gorgeous. They're busting out of the top of the aquarium. I'm going to zoom in real quick. <laughs> yeah, wow. Definitely doing good. Hey, Mad Max. Good to see you, buddy. Thanks for coming in. So, yeah, I'm really enjoying the the natural dirt and tanks. Really am. And then after those plants get big and lush like that, like, so the sand that I used was the sand that I had in my 125-gallon aquarium here with my Oscars. I hate that sand. It's that sand from PetSmart, and it's lighter. So it, it goes mm. and floats up in the water column easier, especially when you have fish like Oscars that are always digging. Mm. And I had to put a pre-filter on my FX6 um, because I was getting too much sand in my canister filter. I like to use the pool filter sand and the black diamond sand because it's heavier and it doesn't plume up in the water column like that. So I'm slowly getting rid of that sand by doing things like that, setting up other tanks because it's okay in a smaller tank because the little fish I'm putting in there don't dig it up. Yeah. So I'm slowly phasing that sand out. When that sand's all gone in that tank, I'm going to probably put pool filter sand in it and, and uh, get, get rid of that crap. I've just bought a big bag of that to use on my, um, my new setup. I'm going to probably, because I'm doing a straight, I'm moving the fish into a bucket and then they're going back in, I'm going to use the stratum that's back. It's in Ziploc bags. So I'm, I'm going to put that in. It'll have beneficial bacteria. I'm going to mix the old sand that's in there, mix it in with the pool filter sand that I'm putting in. Um, and then, obviously, I've got this hang on the back, which is basically just a big... It's a it's a external filter that hangs on the back, basically. Um, there's a guy, I, I, for the life of me, I don't know his name. Um, he, he's got a series where he, he pimps out, like, aquarium filters that come with, basically, no biomedia in. It come with, like, five layers of filter floss, and that's it. No, yeah. no um, biomedia. So I've filled it up with like one kg of bioballs in, in these uh, layers. Used coarse sponge on the top as well. So that's going to be holding bacteria. Added a couple of ceramic rings as well in one layer. So it's like it's it is a big like cartridge filled with loads of media. So as soon as I set up this new tank, it's just going to hopefully be perfectly fine when I put everything in. Obviously. I'll test the water, do water changes for the next week, and then it should settle down. Yeah, and then, well, well by by using that sand, it obviously insta-cycled that tank. And then additionally, I always keep a couple sponge filters running for cycling a quarantine tank or cycling a tank. Once the plants grow, and you've already got that good established sand in there, and the plants get big and they can take over and filter the aquarium, you can take that sponge filter out and you're done that's how i do it and let the plants do all the work but i wow. did put that in for extra bacteria boost and then i seen what craig said here he you know the best tip i can give with sand is mix fine gravel into it into that cheap brownish whitish stuff it makes the best substrate in my opinion well recently i went to my tractor supply here i don't know if you've ever heard of our tractor supply source um they have what they call as an all-purpose sand and it has a little bit more finer gravel mixed with sand. So it looks exactly like what Craig's is talking about. Now, it is dirty. It takes a good two rinses and you're good to go. But, however, it's not like the play sand. That play sand, I swear to God, that's like combing a cat. You can keep combing a cat and you're still going to keep getting fur. This <laughs> stuff here, two rinses, you're good to go just because I like to reduce the cloudiness when you first set a tank up like that. But I'm pretty impressed with that all-purpose sand from Church Supply. It looks really nice. It's a different color. You do get that little different look with the sand mixed with gravel, like you'd see in nature. It's not just purely sand. So it added something different to the fish room as well. Nice to see uh, Melvin in here. A lot of familiar faces. Um, yeah, I'm going to, uh, like like he said, then um, the gravel already, when I set this up, it was unintentional. I was using it as decorative kind of look to put the river gravel in it's now because i've got quarries they're constantly flipping over the sand it's just mixed in there now so now i've just got a cocktail of 
gravel and sand. So when I obviously stirred that in with the new stuff as well, it's that's already holding on to beneficial bacteria too. So it's just it should again, as I said, I'm probably I don't know how to go about it now that I'm thinking about it. Do you think it'd be better to put the new stuff underneath it or above or just mix it in? I would uh, just lay it on top if it was me. I wouldn't mix it up. I don't like disturbing my current substrate too much because a lot of your good bacteria lives on there. Mm. I, I've researched this a little bit about this subject or what you're talking about here. And as with anything, you get various opinions. We can ask people anybody in the chat what they think about that what should he just lay it on top or mix it in me personally i'd probably miss mix it or just lay the new and i've done it here with my own tanks where if i had a tank and there wasn't enough sand in it so i went ahead and i had probably another i don't know 100 pounds of sand right to the very top of it i didn't mix it i just put it right on top but guess what the tank still cycled it never crashed and it's doing good so I, if it was me, I would just lay it on top instead of mixing it up. So what, what I mean is, is everything's coming out. I'm obviously getting a whole new tank. I'm going to put the aqua, the new aqua soil underneath. The bags of the stuff that's already underneath that as well, I'll put that in to build up a bit of height. And then I don't know whether to use that, uh, like, you know, once I've scooped all that out and it's just the sand mixed in with the gravel, the stuff from this, Will it be better to have it just sitting on top, lay it on top, sit it on top, or put all the new stuff underneath so then it's old, new, old, or old, old, new? I, I just like I said, and Max agrees, just lay it on top because eventually it's gonna, they're gonna come through and grow on it too. Yeah. Okay. I don't, that, that's what I've done, and I've never had an issue in my own experience. I've done that with a couple tanks where I had to add sand and, Laid it on top, no issue. So, I think if you go mixing it up and disturbing that too much, you, you it know. might kill it off. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mac, Mac says, "Old, old, new." Yeah, it's nice to see you in here as well, Mexicali. Um, so you know with streaming, up, by the way, because I'm going to be using this. Um, I've got a live probably happen later on i think maybe friday this week um on the free version how many people are you allowed in i think as many as you want i think it's youtube that has that restriction yeah and i think if you're using a using a third-party software such as Streamyard, i don't think there's a restriction on that these guys that have been doing it longer than me might be able to say different but i I get a max of people like 30 people in my lives. I think I've had 32 today. We hit 30 for a little bit. And so unless you're going to have 50 to a hundred people in your live, I don't think you need to worry about anything, but again, Oh, you mean up on panel or just um, coming? Yeah. On, on, on panel. On panel. Oh, six. Yeah. Six. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, that's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Was... Yeah. Yeah. You know, you don't have to pay for it. If anyone uh, wants to hop on panel, including yourself, Jesse, um, I'm I'm thinking of going live this Friday with uh, potentially JT Keeping Fish, um, definitely with Arnold, uh, Kings, Aquariums, and Ant World. Uh, so it'd be nice to have a nice little panel of uh, familiar faces in for sure. Yeah, and I know all them guys too. Um, what time Friday? Because I'll be working. Um. I'm trying. It'd be good to schedule a time. I'm I'm free all day, so from morning to. So let me ask nighttime. you this: For me right now, it's seven forty-three p.m. Okay. What time is it for you? It is ooh, quarter to one. It's it's what? It is fifteen fifteen minutes to one in the morning. <laughs> one a.m. So seven. You're like five hours ahead of me. Yeah. So what time were you thinking you were going to go live on Friday? Your so time. I usually do lives um, because I know that there's quite a lot of viewers that are subscribed to me from your your side of the world and also like the likes of Australia, South Africa and that. So I usually do 
like eight eight p.m. Um, half uh, eight thirty. So that'd be like one, one, one thirty in the morning for me. I'll be in bed. Wait, oh. <laughs> Wait are you five? Are you five ahead or are you five? I'm gone. You're five I'm, behind, aren't you? I'm behind. So I was oh, like, okay. No, so you it'd be um uh, probably yeah, it'd be in the afternoon for you. So I think you'd be working probably. Yeah, I'll be at work. Yeah. When do you finish? It varies, but I usually, you know, in my time, five o'clock, it varies. There's never really start or stop time with this is how long you need to work or how long you want to work. It's your choice or what you need okay. to do. But generally, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still there at 5 p.m. my time. So that would be five um, behind you, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 a.m. for you. 10.30? I think it'd be, yeah, that'd be the night time. Night time. We, we, I'm still on PM. So when you're on PM, I'm still on PM, I think. Okay. So at the, mo at the moment, obviously, it's just gone over midnight for me, so. Okay. Well, I'll know when you go live because I'm subscribed to you and I have. Yeah, yeah. So if you, do, if you do want to hop in, I, I can put it in the chat anyway. Um, okay. And then um, yourself and a couple of us, anyone in the chat that usually likes to hop on is yeah. more than welcome. I think it makes it more fun to get like have some good conversation. Yeah, and as well, obviously, your experience in the hobby is a lot longer than mine, um, and I'm sure there's quite a few people that are all in different stages, so it's nice to have that conversation and hearing where people are at, um, especially on, like, with people like yourself that keep bigger fish uh, and i and i tend to go for the lot more nano kind of fish yeah although you do keep some nano fish yeah some but they're yeah, most of my stock's bigger i like my big fish i like my oscars my cichlids goldfish blood parrots angelfish um and boonas tiger barbs I, I don't consider tiger barbs a big fish i guess they'd be considered like a medium fish medium but. yeah I love my tiger barbs, man. I love watching a school, my school of tiger barbs just swimming around, especially when they eat. They, they're like piranhas going after that food. Yeah. <laughs> and the same with the mbunas. I got a ton of mbunas in this tank behind me. It's so fun to see all them colors swimming around. It's a blast. Yeah. Have you, have you ever kept um, shell dwellers before? I have not. I've been hearing their popularity is increasing, but I don't. I've never kept them, and I and I have to get them dang shells. I think you can buy them off Amazon pretty cheap if you don't yeah. do the DIY thing or whatever. They're definitely something I'd like to keep. Um, I, I don't think you need much of a big tank either. Um, Jesse, yeah. you will just have to be doing the closing act. <laughs> <Adam's That's laugh. laughs> I like what Primetime did. He had one of those 55-gallon low boys with shell dwellers in it. Oh yeah, yeah. What a great, great looking tank, but a tank like that would be hard to keep, especially up against the wall. That's a tank you must need in the center of the room. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I feel like, see, I, I've got the issue where I can just about see here, but when, when I get this new tank, I won't be able to see this side at all. So I, I like the idea of um, just having tanks where you can see all round and. Nothing, yeah where it's in the middle of a room obviously i think you'd need maybe a studio or a, a, a big room to be able to achieve that especially with something that big but i love them low style tanks where there's like a power head and like hill stream loaches and all them kind of kind of fish i had a hill stream loach one time and i really enjoyed it and people were saying ah you know everyone says you got to have high flow in your tank for them no it you don't but they, they, not, then there was people saying that, right? And I was like, oh, well, I get it. You know, they're, they're generations pulled from the first generations, right? But I'll tell you what I noticed. I turned a power head on in that tank. Prior to turning that power head on that tank, he was just dumbing around the tank. When I had that power head on, guess where he was sitting? Right in front of it. Right in front of it. He liked the flow. If yeah. I turned that power head off, he'd leave. As soon as I turned that power head back on right back in front of that flow so i i, I would have to say i disagree with that a little bit in my experience with them they yeah, do I've, like it and they'll go find it if it's there i've watched him um, on aquarium co-op's channel i think Corey was saying that he had in a his big large tank i think he's got him um, one of his um mabu puffers in there now obviously uh, i think Murphy passed away uh not long ago r.i.p but i think it's maybe ladybird 
um, he he had a lot of Hillstream luchas in there, and the temperature they say that Hillstream luchas are like cold water or temperate fish. He said he had them in like eighty plus with discus or I think it was discus or like a hotter water kind of fish, and they were breeding in there and they were thriving and there was no flow at all. It was just yeah. dead. Yeah. So I, I think they can adapt, but you know, I guess it's, they do like the flow. In my yeah, experience. of course. But I kept them in my goldfish tank, which obviously had no heater, and my house keeps that tank around seventy-two or something like that. Yeah. So they must just be very adaptable. Yeah, I think I think we like panic too much about parameters mm -hmm. and like temperatures of fish because it in nature it's never stable. It, it, you have rain, you have floods, you have so many things that could happen. It, the water temperature is always changing. pH. Well, every time it rains, what do you think it's doing to the water chemistry? lowering it down of course oscar and june knows her oscars of course and and the two i do i always have a power flow running for my a power head running on my oscar tank and now i will say if i unplug it give them a break they just become real still comical cool, collected and actually the one stops picking on the other one when i turn the power head off they seem to be a bit more chill as soon as i turn that power head on they're a little bit more active they do have fun in it they'll swim in the flow but he starts picking on the other one more when I have that power it's, head on. It's strange, isn't it? What behavior like happens when you turn it on? Either fish will become really shy, or then they they just switch and become a completely different kind of fish. Right. But I do it. You know, I like my power head and my canister setups because with the combination, you know, I always aim them up to the surface so it's coming over and down, and it helps shove all the uneaten food and poop over to one side of the tank where the filter inlet is at. Now, it yeah. doesn't always get it, but what it does for me is it puts it all on one side of the tank real easy to get it all out, even mm. if the filter don't take it. So I love that combination. And all my other tanks, crystal clear because of that setup. I think um, the one thing I've done recently with my filter that's been so like helpful is putting a pre-filter sponge because it didn't come with one and um previous filters i had there was so much so much gunk inside them but when you have a pre-filter it's good first of all it's good for beneficial bacteria it's like just having a mini sponge filter in the tank and then second of all you can see if the flow starts going down you know it's getting gunked up and you don't need to be going inside and dissecting your filter every couple of weeks you, you just leave it and you just take that off you give it a wash doesn't matter if you wash it with tap water some people say you use tank water but if it's a pre-filter sponge you don't really need to be concerned about that and i mean my water quality and how crystal it looks now is great oh yeah and yeah you know, for years i was that guy where i wouldn't clean my filters out unless it was in tank water but then i watched a video from primetime talking about cleaning your filters in tap water and it doesn't harm it. And they actually did a study with like, it will kill some of your beneficial bacteria, but it doesn't clean, kill enough to cause a problem. Well, I started doing it. I clean every one of my canister filters, maybe every seven months, cause that's all they need. I take them outside and I clean them with the tap water and they get cleaner. You clean them faster. I put them back in and I don't have a problem. I think that's fine when you have a well-established tank because it grows on everything. It's everywhere, not just in the filter. And by doing that, you're not killing at all. There's still some there. So I do that now. I get my crap cleaner, faster, and I have the, I can go do every one of them around the room much faster, and I don't have an issue with it. It's, so that's exactly. How I, that's how I do it. Now, my one buddy, Patty's Aquatics, he even rinses off his bio rings with the freaking tap water. Wow. He hasn't had an issue, but I cannot bring myself to do that. So I don't I, do I, it. I, no, I couldn't. That's like nails to a chalkboard kind yeah. of thing. <laughs> I refuse nah. to do the bio rings and the bio media. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. June, June, you're right. The FX is is plenty. <coughs> she has overflows at the ends. Sucks. I like it that way. <coughs> Excuse me. I, I was um, fortunate because I've had to change filter that i was going to put onto this new tank so i've had it set up now for almost a month this um this new filter um i moved the canister onto the new tank that i saw set up in my girlfriend's i had an internal for, for a bit it wasn't great but i've but i took everything out of that put it inside there 
And I, I was lucky enough, obviously, this tank's been set up now for a long time. Um, it's well established. So even if I, I take a filter out and put a new one on tomorrow, because I think a lot of people think you need to depend on filters because they're always there. But as you said, you, you've removed the sponge filter out. You don't need to be so concerned about it because everything's on the plants, on the rocks, in the water column. You don't need to be so stressed out about changing filters. So that's why I've put it on there to and now move over and it's jump started to be ready for this new tank. Yeah, if you have a well seasoned tank with a good strong bacteria, it'll break down all these organic matters, right? And then your plants will absorb all that for food and turn it to oxygen. And same boots, that's what I use cold tap water. What I, I they do make taller tanks, Laura. Not that's not so common for what we keep. Um, but why I like longer tanks as opposed to taller tanks is because the longer they are, you get more surface area. Yeah. So you have better oxygen. And and I think that I would like it personally if I was a fish, if I could go further this way than up and down. Yeah, exactly. I think all these skill fish, I mean, they're used to this. They're not used to this. Yeah. Like that, that it's not in them. And I think if I watch my fish swimming like this, I'm not sure about you, but that's it's like glass earth in a can. It, it it stresses me out watching this. And you can only imagine the fish is stressed out too. Yeah, yeah. I like my longer tanks. The longer, the better, in my opinion. But I mean. I mean, the bigger a tank you get, obviously, the taller it can get, too. There's so many custom tanks out there. You can build custom tanks. You can have it all long or all tall. Look at them tubular tanks they got. That one that busted at that, that aquatic place not long ago it was a massive cylindrical tank. But yeah, it was so it's, tall. It's the same thing. It's just turned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, if you have, like, an island in the middle and the, the school around it, I've seen that in, like, quite a few museums or, like, um aquatic part of aquatic centers i've been to it's a really nice thing to watch and i think that's natural to the fish as well but again it's got to be big enough it can't just be a big pipe or like a big round small cylinder it's got to be big enough as you said yeah i i just like my longer tanks i think they look better and the fact that you get more surface area yeah for sure june has a big tank she literally i don't know if you know june only oscars here have you ever watched her? She keeps. Um, I have. I think I have subbed to her. If if I haven't, I, I, I will after this. Um, but I have. I she, do know of June. Yeah, she was in there. She's been in quite a few lives now. Oh yeah, she's been around a while, and she literally keeps. I don't know how many Oscars months. she has, but it's over a hundred easily. She's got very big tanks. She's got a really cool setup. She's got all the Oscars you can think of. Her favorites are the lemons. Yeah. But I think I am going to go ahead and close this down for night. Been I'm on for two hours and I got to go take a pee. I was about <laughs> to say myself, um, yeah. say, uh, well, what time is it now? Oh God, it's one. Yeah, it's about to hit one a.m. So, but I am super jealous me. because she throws out numbers like that. <laughs> <laughs> if I could have four twenty G. Well, uh, thanks for having me on anyway, Jesse. Yeah, thank you for coming up, buddy. I'm going to jump on. Anytime I'm up, you feel free. You don't have to ask. That's why I tell everybody, if I'm on and you catch me in the live and you want to come up, let me know. I'll put the link in. You join anytime. You don't have to ask. No problem. Much love anyway. And, uh, 115. Care, Enjoy your pee. <laughs> you too. Uh, yeah, I need one. <laughs> 115 Oscars. Thanks, Tommy. Boots Cat. Yeah, she's got a big-ass tank. Thank you, Laura. I appreciate you missing the Florida Oscars. I'm jumping off. I have to hit the bathroom. I got to charge this computer and I got to tie things up with dogs and the birds and the cats. And we'll just throw in the pigs, the horses and slop the hogs. I got to go over to Tommy's house and help him um, um, give birth to some doves and chickens. And then we got to slaughter a couple uh, pigs and get some bacon, you know. Thank you, Mark, for, for being here. I think you were probably lurking. It's good to see you, buddy. Always appreciate you. Linda, good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate everybody's support. Don't forget about Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Be here or be square. Yeah, you got it, buddy. We're going to do it. 
Legacy, always good to see you too, buddy. I'm out. Talk to you later. You guys are the best. Till next time.